I'm Matt Reeves, director of War for the Planet of the Apes, and I'm here to talk about the new trailer. As the film begins, we are two years after dawn, and Caesar has been fighting as we begin the story for two years, just trying to survive uh, a war that he never wanted. And he and the apes have retreated from the city into the woods, and they are uh, finding a way to survive there as he leads uh, the war from the apes' perspective from a hidden command base. And the humans have been searching for Caesar. He's taken on almost legendary status because somehow, though the army is armed with all kinds of weaponry from the armory, um, the apes, of course, only have scavenged weapons. They have weapons that they've made, and yet they are surviving in the woods. And part of that is because of Caesar's intelligent command. And they believe that if they could find him, that the apes would fall. So as the story begins, we have the humans moving through the woods uh, and finding an ape trench and thinking that maybe they're close to the command base and maybe they will find Caesar. The waterfall here is um, where the hidden command base is and essentially almost like uh, those images from uh, Last of the Mohicans, there is a, an ape community behind the waterfall. The, a small band of, of uh, special ops soldiers have discovered it and are coming in and that's when we have the big reveal of Woody. Um, and Caesar and Woody face each other for the first time very early in the film, and it begins this epic struggle. This was a fun scene because, you know, special ops, each soldier does their own camo. It's part of what you do. You're expressing yourself on your face. And so I said to Woody, well, you should just do it. And he came out of his trailer and he looked like that, and I was like, okay, this is very cool. The colonel it has his forces amassed in uh, a camp that was an armory. And after the crisis, they took over the armory um, and turned it into relocation camp, and the sick were housed there. And so the world that has fallen is a constant reminder under everything that happens, and the troops that are this sort of hardened unit, the Alpha Omega, who follow the colonel uh, almost like a god, have all amassed here um, for the fight. And, uh, and so this is him sort of facing them down. He comes out in the morning, they do their morning moto, and they're, they're doing what the Marines themselves do every morning. You know, their blood makes uh, the grass grow. We make the blood flow. Um, but they're pledging their allegiance to the Colonel and his, his mission. He's become almost godlike to, to the humans. This group that follows him, they're the Alpha Omega, which is actually a reference to Beneath. Um, but that's the beginning and the end, because this group believes that if they succeed, then the humans will survive, and if they fail, then the humans will end, and the human race will vanish, um, and it will become a planet of apes. Even though he does very extreme and dark things, he doesn't do so without justification. And so in that sense, he's not a villain, but he's an extremely tortured, dark character, and Woody was just incredible. Um, and it was really great to see them acting opposite each other. And one of the things, you know, in a war film is that you have spectacle, you have the spectacle of the battles, but what matters is the drama that's in the forefront and the intimate battle of wills that exists between Caesar um, and the Colonel, between Andy and Woody in this film is, is the core of the movie and the way they face each other off is, is really uh, pretty compelling and exciting to watch. But in any case, what happens is as we're seeing these apes uh, in this battle and we're seeing the humans uh, stalk them, we discover that there is a small group of apes who are working alongside the humans. Uh, there are turncoats. They've taken on um, these names from the humans uh, that are very demeaning. You know, they refer to them as the Kong, like King Kong and Donkey Kong. And in fact, the apes that are with them, um, they bring along with them because they can reveal ape strategy, might help to give an advantage, but also they are like pack mules. Basically, because it's a war movie, it's very much about survival and what you would do to survive. And it is revealed at the end of the scene as we see this, there's Gabriel Chavaria, um, who's a wonderful young actor who is one of the soldiers, and he's captured at the end of this battle. And he, he faces down Caesar, and it's revealed to him that the reason that these apes, the small band of apes, are on the human side is because they were the followers of Koba, and they couldn't imagine that, C that Caesar would ever uh, allow them back into the fold. And so just in order to survive, they're willing to prostrate themselves, and uh, it's, a, it's a pretty cool part of the story. Koba's presence is huge in the film, and Caesar, as this story begins, is haunted by the fact that this war began and he feels like it was Caesar's blind spot, his own blind spot, in not being able to anticipate exactly how darkly 
Koba felt about humans and that if he'd done that that maybe this war could have been avoided and he in this film though you're seeing real time as Caesar um, loses any ability to empathize with humans and starts to hate them and so Koba haunts him. In the opening of the trailer uh, this first shot was shot uh, on Tofino a uh, beautiful location on Vancouver Island and of course it's evocative of the beach uh, at the end of the original Planet of the Apes but it's in quite a different context here because the story um, is a war story but as the as the violence escalates it becomes more and more personal for Caesar because he sees his apes uh, being exterminated and he decides that he is going to go after Woody Harrelson the colonel himself and he sets off on a kind of mythic journey and his uh, partners, his, the closest sort of allies of his, Maurice the orangutan and Rocket uh, and, and Luca, they don't want him to go because they think that could be a suicide mission. So they set off um, a posse uh, to go find the colonel and instead they find this deserter and uh, he pulls a gun on them and Caesar, uh, in a way we've never seen before, just kills him. And it's a, uh, it's a haunting scene because you realize that Caesar has lost all empathy for humans. Uh, but very shortly after that, inside the structure that's right there, they hear more noises and they go in and they find this girl. And uh, Maurice the orangutan uh, is struck because she can't seem to speak. And Caesar is like, well, we have to, we have to go. He says, oh, well, uh, she won't make it out here alone, the girl, and uh, we have to take her. And Caesar ends up uh, not really so much agreeing, uh, but doesn't stop Maurice. And so what you're seeing here on the beach is that very unlikely posse. Here they are on this giant sort of war revenge mission, and they've got this little girl hugging the back of an orangutan, and Caesar is looking at Maurice like, what are you doing to me? One of the things that, that uh, I really wanted to do was to take us out of the Muir Woods and into other environments. And um, Ryan Stafford, who's our VFX producer, he reminds me that the moment that we finished Dawn, I said to him glibly, okay, next movie, Apes in Snow. And it's funny because I don't remember it that way at all, but that's what he claims happened. And um, it did find its way into our thinking as Mark Bombeck and I were writing, which was how can we take this and, and push it into the realm of the mythic, take this story and have Caesar's search lead him out of the sort of rainy woods along the coast and into the Sierras into a place that felt very mythic. And so we took our mocap cameras and we shot our mocap actors in the snow. We were in Calgary and Whistler and it was really snowing and it was really cold. One of the great things for me from the beginning about getting involved in this iteration of the franchise is that the original film exists because it means we already know the ending. It does become a Planet of the Apes. And so the question then is how? And when stories are about how, they're about character and they're about philosophy and they're about emotion and psychology. You're never not aware of the trajectory we're on and that informs each and every move that we're making because we're revealing how it gets to be that way. And that's part of the mystery that's being revealed to Caesar as the story progresses and as he uh, encounters the Colonel, as he encounters Woody, Woody reveals where the extremity in his actions comes from and the chilling thing is that as he reveals the justification behind all these chilling acts, everything he says is true. Nothing is a lie. And so you realize that he's not crazy. It's just that the world has gone crazy. The world is extreme.